que más difícil que vivía y fue la única que... Tiene grandes techos de la tuya. Good evening, teacher. Hello, good evening. Well, hello, guys. Good evening. Um, first of all, before uh, starting the class, I would like to know if you can hear me clearly because I have new earphones, so I want to verify if they are working or not. Can you hear me? Yes. Cl clearly. Clearly. Okay, very good, thank you. So uh, it is time for us to start once again this class. It is, there are just girls today and we are just seven. Let's see, seven, all right. So uh, it is a time to start the class and today we have something that is going to be very important. And, but before starting the class of today, I just wanted to wait for the other ones, but I don't know if the other ones are going to connect today. So um, I will ask you uh, some questions regardless to the last topic that we saw like last week, because this week is going to be our last week, guys. We just have like four classes left. And with the one that we're going to have today, it's going to be just three classes. So we are about to finish. And I was going to ask you, are you having any trouble like doing the exercises on the platform? Because I know that some one of you already complete the platform, but I was wondering if any of you have had any problem while doing the exercises or something like that. So are you doing okay with the platform? Are you having any type of problems or something? No, it is everything okay? Everything is okay. Okay, very good. So we're going to start with the class of today, guys. It is already 8.02. So before we start, I would like to ask you some questions, as I said before, about the last topic that we saw. 
Do you remember that it was countable and non-countable or uncountable nouns? So I'm going to ask you, uh, if I have the noun milk, will that be countable or non-countable or both? What do you think? Uncountable. 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 Very good. What if I have uh, chicken? Is that countable or uncountable or both? Countable. 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 Mm -hmm. Let's see. What if I have uh, chocolate? Will that be countable, uncountable, or both? Uncountable. Countable. Well, that one can actually be both. Chicken and chocolate, they can be both. It means countable and uncountable, both at the same time. So what about, let me see, coffee. Can that be countable, uncountable, or both? Uncountable. Uncountable. Sí, es como water. It's liquid. Yes. What about... Let me see. Mm. Let me see. Rice. Is that countable or uncountable? Uncountable. Okay, very good. So guys, um, I would like to ask you because at our last class, it will be a topic that most of you didn't understand. So today I will, well, I was going to ask you if there's any topic that you didn't understand that well or that you would like me to reinforce, that will be our last class. So um, I will let you think in today. So tomorrow I'm going to ask you one more time and I'm going to do like a survey. So you are going to tell me what is the topic that you didn't understand that well. So the one that got the most votes, it will be the one that we will have or that we will reinforce in our last class. Okay, so I will let you think in today and part of tomorrow. And tomorrow I'm going to ask you about the topic, each one of you. So the one that got the most votes, it will be the one that we will reinforce, okay? So with that being said, we are going to start the class of today. And uh, let me share the presentation with you. So today we're going to see adverbs of frequency. I know that probably some of you already know what I'm talking about, but let me see. All right. Can you see it, guys? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So today we're going to start with these adverbs of frequency, and I'm pretty sure that most of you already know a little bit about this. Uh, they are very common in the English language. Most of the time we use them to, to give certain type of frequency or to talk about something that we frequently do in our daily basis. So um, to start with this, we are going to see the most common ones. And these ones or the adverbs or frequency are the ones that we normally use to talk about something that we oftenly do um, when it comes to our daily basis. So here we have a percentage of what represents each one of them. The one that it represents the 100%, it is always, because obviously that means siempre, right? Always, 100%, 90% usually, 80% normally or generally, 70% often or frequently, 
50% sometimes, that means that you do it or you do not do it. You have the half and a half, right? So that why it represents the 50%. Occasionally, the 30%, 10% seldom, 5% hardly ever, or rarely, that, that it, uh, they both have the same meaning. So you can use whether hardly ever or rarely in, a, in a, both at the same time you're going to be doing or saying the same thing. And 0% never. Here or today we're going to learn how to create or the right way where the outward of frequency should be placed in a sentence because it's really important that you know where to place it. If not, you could probably be doing some mistakes when it comes to English grammar. But today we're going to try to explain you the right place or the right way to use an adverb of frequency. We have some examples right there. These are general examples. So I will need uh, the help of Lisette Castillo. Can you please help me with the first three examples? And then Kelly Osorio with the next three. Then Tatiana Martinez with the last three, please. I always study after class. I usually walk to work. I normally, normally get good mark. Mm -hmm. Very good, thank you so much. Kelly, please. I I often read in bed at night. Mm -hmm. I sometimes sing in the shower. I occasionally go to bed late. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Very good. Tatiana Martinez, please. I seldom pass mm -hmm. down mm -hmm. all my food. I hardly, hardly ever. Mm -hmm. Get hungry. Get angry, okay? They get, they get angry. Never hit me. Okay, very good. Thank you. So, guys, pay attention to the pronunciation. I will read them one more time. So, always, usually, normally, generally. This one right here, we can say it in two ways. Number one, often so that means that we pronounce the letter t or we can say it often without pronouncing the letter t in both pronunciations are completely correct so often or often frequently sometimes occasionally seldom hardly ever rarely and never so Mario, can you please help me with the last two examples, please? Daniel always passes his exam. Mm -hmm. He is always happy. All right, so we are going to also learn today how or the exact way where we should uh, place the upper of frequency when we have uh, an auxiliary verb, and when we have a main verb. And the first one, as you can see, Daniel always passes his exams. So as you can see here, the adverb of frequency will, will goes before the main verb, when we have a main verb. But when we have the verb be acting as the main, the, ver the adverb of frequency is going to be after. So Daniel always passes his exams. And when we have the verb be, he's always happy. This is just general information, guys, because later on we are going to see some exceptions that we also have when it comes to Alberts of frequency. But this is the most general information that we have at the moment. So let's continue with this. Um, it says that. Let me see. Can you Picture. play? Yes. Um, how do you say seldom? Seldom. Like that. Yes. 
Seldom. Seldom. Y yeah. en Spanish? Oh, seldom. It, this is like rara vez. Thank you. All right. Y hardly ever? Hardly ever, casi nunca. Thank you. Okay. So, um, let me see. Hazel, can you please help me reading all this first part? All this one. Please. Yes. Usually, normally, often, frequently, sometimes, occasionally. Mm -hmm. Occasionally, I like to eat Thai food. All right. But but we cannot use the following at the begin at the beginning of a sentences. Mm -hmm. Always, seldom, rarely, hardly, ever, never. All right, very good. So as you can see here, the first one, it says here that these ones that we have at the uh, at the top, encima, these ones can we use it at the beginning? We can use all of these ones at the beginning without having any problem. But the ones that we cannot use at the beginning of a sentence are this one, always. We cannot use it at the beginning. Seldom, rarely, hardly, ever, never. These ones, we can never use them. But with the other ones, that the ones that we have here at the top, we can use them at the beginning. And we have an example. Occasionally, I like to eat Thai food. We can have here, um, like, which one? I cannot see this part. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I cannot see this part. But the main idea is that the ones that we have at the top those are the ones that we can sometimes use at the beginning without having any problem when it comes to grammar. But these ones that we have right here, we have to understand that we can never ever use them at the beginning of the sentence. Why? Because if you do that, sometime, someone might understand what you're saying or sometimes someone can understand if you use them at the beginning, but that will be grammatically incorrect. So that's why you need to know which ones you can use at the beginning of the sentence and which ones you cannot. So that's why it says right here, things that you need to pay attention, all right? So uh, another very important thing, we use, it says hardly ever and never with positive, not negative verbs. Um, example, she hardly ever comes to my parties. They never say thank you. Why we cannot use never with a negative? Because we could be double making a negative, double negation, and we cannot do that in English because that will be grammatically incorrect. So that's why it's very important that even though never means nunca and the, and the sense of that sentence might sound as negative, this uh, adverb of frequency needs to be used in a positive sentence. Never is going to be used in a negative sentence, always positives, all right? So pay, pay attention to that so you don't get confused. So let me see here this part. It also says that we use ever in questions and negative statements. Example, have you ever been to New Zealand? I haven't ever been to, to Switzerland. It's the same way as if we say I have never been. But if you, if you can notice here, 
because we have a negative right here, we are not using never. Why? Because we know that never cannot be used with a negative sentence because it will be double, uh, it will be like double negation. That's why when we have a, a negative right here, the word that we are going to use or the adverb of frequency is going to be ever. When we have a positive sentence with a negative sense, in this case, it will be never. So is that clear, guys? Any questions so far? So far, so good. Teacher. From mm -hmm. Teacher. Uh, dale, dale. Oh. No, usted primero. Eh, cuando se utiliza, bueno, o sea, solo en las preguntas vamos a utilizar ever. Exactly. No vamos a poder utilizar las demás. Let me understand first your question. So your question is, we can use uh, only ever when it comes to questions or yes. if we can use the other ones as well? Uh, un poco de las dos. <laughs> All right. So this one here, aquí solo te está dando la manera en que puedes usar ever. Mas no significa que los otros no se puedan usar como pregunta. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. This is just the way they are just explaining to you the way or that you have to use ever. But you can use always, you can use seldom, you can use rarely if you want to. For example, if I ask you, do you always uh, brush your teeth? Siempre te lavas los dientes? I'm using always. I'm not using ever. So that means that you can use the other ones as well. Oh, okay, gracias. All right. Sea teacher que podemos usar todos, pero en especial ever solo se usa para negativo y pregunta. Exactly. Para positivo, no. Exactly. Mm -hmm. ah, That's the explanation. Mm -hmm. Never positivo y ever en pregunta y negativo. Exactly. Okay. So was that your question? No, teacher. So what, what, what is your question though? So is Mario? La, la misma have... pregunta era la misma pregunta que, que hicieron anteriormente. All right, all right, cool. So no Thank problem. You. So uh, this is just the usage or the use that you have to do with each one of the uh, of the adverbs of frequency, because it is very important that you know how to use them and the right place in the sentence. So here we have, here I'm going to explain you the right place that you need or how you, you are going to use the adverbs of frequency. And this is very important, guys, to pay attention to it, if, because if you don't pay attention to this, you might get lost in any exam or any evaluation. So the first part, it says that when we have, let me see. It says that when we have the, the position of an adverb in a sentence, the first one it says, an adverb of frequency goes before a main verb, except with to be. As you can see here, we have a formula. We have a formula or a structure that we need to follow in order for you to understand what is the position in an adverb in a sentence. First of all, we have a subject, I do with they, he, she, it, right? Then it goes the adverb, and then it goes the main verb. But this one, this position of this adverb happens only when we have a main verb. That's why it says, except with to be. Why? Because with the verb be, it is a completely new story. So, let me see, here we have examples. I always remember to do my homework. Here, 
the main verb it is remembered. He normally gets good marks in his ex in exams. The main verb is get. But what happens when we have the verb be? And here we have the structure or the formula that you need to follow. It is the following. Subject plus to be plus the adverb. Here we have subject, I do with the he, she, it. Then the verb be. Then the arbor example, they are never pleased to see me. She isn't usually bad tempered. So as you can notice right here, it is completely different when we are using the verb be, but keep this in mind. This is, let me see, this is going to happen when we use only the verb be, because when we have auxiliaries like have, will, must, might, could, would, and etc., so we are going to follow a different structure. And here we have it says that when we use an auxiliary verb such as have, will, must, might, could, would, can, the adverb of frequency is placed between the auxiliary and the main verb. So here we have the formula or the structure that we need to follow. First of all, subject plus the auxiliary verb plus the other plus the main verb. So example, she can, here we have an auxiliary, she can sometimes beat, that in this case, this verb beat, it will be the main verb. Uh, Next one, it says, I would hardly ever be unkind to someone. The next one, they might never see each other again. And they could occasionally be heard laughing. So guys, any questions so far? No questions? If there's no questions, I'm going to move, move, going to move forward. The chart no entendi. Oh, this, well, let me explain you. Estas son eh, fórmulas o la posición correcta que tiene que tener un adverbio en una oración. Ejemplo, cuando tenemos un, un en la oración tenemos un verbo normal, tenemos un verbo, el verbo original al que le llamamos main verb, for example, if I tell you, I study English at night, si yo digo eso, I study English at night, ¿cuál sería el main verb? I study English at night, what's the main verb right there? Study. Study, right? So, como yo tengo study, vengo y voy a decir de la siguiente forma. Ya tengo, ya tengo ahí la fórmula que tengo que seguir. Yo dije, I study English at night. Pero como aquí no tengo un adverbio de frecuencia, right? So, voy a agregar un always. Como ya sé que aquí tengo un, un, el main verb, antes del main verb, yo voy a agregar el adverbo de frecuencia. Este es para solo cuando tengo un main verb, siguiendo esa estructura. Pero ¿qué pasa si yo tengo, eh, estoy utilizando el verbo to be? Y si yo digo... Uh, let me put an example here. Yo digo, if I said I am a good student. Aquí no tengo ni un verbo, sino que el verbo principal en este caso sería que 
the verb be, right? The verb will be. Yes. Entonces, como la regla me dice que cuando yo tengo el verbo to be siguiendo esta fórmula, dice primero el sujeto, que en este caso sería I, you, we, they, he, she, it, los pronombres. Luego el verbo to be, que en este caso sería am. Entonces la regla me dice, después del verbo to be, tenés que agregar el adverbio de frecuencia. Entonces yo voy a poner de nuevo always. I am always a good student. Siguiendo la fórmula. So, do you understand now, Catherine? Yo creo que, perdón, yo creo que lo que confunde es que dice subject, to be, adverb, y después sería como complement. Yeah, exactly, ¿Cierto? a complement. Ajá. Entonces, como que todos nos centramos en sujeto, eh, to be y adverbio. Entonces no, como que no, no cuadraba mucho la oración, ¿me entiendes? Ah, ok, ok. Entonces creo que eso nos confundió un poco. All right. So, but, but it's, it is good if you ask the questions. So you are going to understand a little bit more. Okay. So, Catherine, is, does that answer your question? No, teacher. No. So, I mean, you, you still have a doubt? Uh, what is the mean of she isn't usually bad tempered? Ella no está usualmente bad tempered. En este caso, bad tempered es como malhumorada. Ella no es usualmente malhumorada. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So is there, is there any other question, guys? Or can I move forward? Well, if there's no questions, so I'm going to move forward. So here we have a very important question. This question, how often? Esta pregunta te va a ayudar a ti. Le va a ayudar a ustedes a saber la frecuencia. When someone, cuando alguien les haga una pregunta con how often? automáticamente ustedes van a tener que utilizar un adverb of frequency. That's why it says right here, how often is to ask about the frequency of an action. We place it at the beginning of a, of a question. Aquí tenemos una, un ejemplo. How often do or does, dependiendo el pronombre, right? I do with a he shit. How often do you study or how often do you study English? And here we have some examples. How often do you go to the cinema? How often does Mary cook? ¿Qué tan a menudo? Esta pregunta significa how often? ¿Qué tan a menudo? So if I ask you, how often do you study English? ¿Qué tan a menudo estudias inglés? So you're going to tell me, well, I always study English. I never study English. I rarely study English. I hardly ever study English. So when you give the answer to that question, remember always you are going to use another verb of frequency, okay? So here we have also, here we have some other, like another type of frequency words. Eh, palabras de frecuencia también. It is very important, guys. In English, uh, or when we use adverbs of frequency, no podemos decir one time, que significaría una traducción literal una vez. One time. Aunque sabemos que time significa tiempo, ¿verdad? Pero en este caso, cuando juntamos, pero time también puede ser utilizado para significar vez. So hay veces decimos one time or two times, dos veces. But in English, sometimes we can use those words. Estas palabras las podemos utilizar, pero son palabras bien informales. Utilizadas en el, en el lenguaje del inglés informal. So everyone outside is going to be able to understand what you're saying, but 
It is not a formal language. The formal language words, las palabras formales para utilizar, para decir one time, we are going to use once. Once que significa también una vez. Or para decir two times, vamos a utilizar twice, que también significa dos veces. These words are formal words, son palabras formales. But as I tell, as I mentioned to you before, one time or two time, people normally use them, but in a very informal language. So keep that in mind so you don't make any mistakes. All right. So uh, we also have these words of frequency. Example like once, twice, three times. Cuando después de tres para arriba, sí podemos utilizar three times, four times, five times, seven times, eight times, ten times, and so on and so on. Okay. But when it comes to first or one or two, these two words cannot be used. So we cannot say one time or two time. We already have those words of frequency, which are once and twice. So, ¿cómo vamos a utilizar estas? Podemos utilizarla diciendo una vez a la semana como once a week, una vez al día, once a day, o dos veces al día, twice a, a day, twice a week, dos veces a la semana, twice a month, dos veces en el mes, twice a year, dos veces en el año, or three times a day, tres veces en el día, three times a week, three, three, uh, three times a month, three times a year, or four times, and so on and so on, okay? These are not adverbs of frequency. These are words of frequency, okay? Let's make that difference clear. Because the adverbs of frequency are, are the ones that we saw at the beginning of the class. But these ones right here are words of frequency. Do not get confused on this part, okay? So uh, here we have as well another words of frequency or frequency expressions. Uh, every. Every, que significa cada. Every evening, cada tarde, every morning, cada mañana, every night, cada noche, every day, cada día. Eh, every weekend, every Saturday, every Monday, every week, every year, every month, and so on and so on. Okay, so here we have some examples. Mary kicks every day. Every day. I play tennis every Sunday. As it says right here, the rest of the frequency expression are placed at the end of the sentence. Algo que les quede bien claro. Estas words, palabras de frecuencia o expresiones de frecuencia son puestas al final de la oración. Si se fijan. If you notice right here, Mary cooks every day. No puedo decir every day Mary cooks. People outside, las personas les van a entender, but that is very informal language. Y aquí estamos aprendiendo formal language, lenguaje formal, okay? So keep that in mind. Frequency expressions or frequency words are always placed at the end of the sentence, okay? Keep that in mind. Any questions so far, guys? Every, eh, es como todos, uh, every day, todos los días. No. ¿Se puede traducir así? Mm, no. No. Like, like. Cada. We, cada, exacto. Cada día. Mm -hmm. Ok. Exacto. All right. So, here we have like a very brief detailed, de una forma muy detallada, lo que acabamos de ver, eh, que acabamos de ver de las, frequency words or frequency expressions. So we have here, um, for example, if I ask you, ¿Qué tan a menudo? How often do you brush your teeth? ¿Qué tan a menudo te lavas los dientes? So we are going to say three times a day. Tres veces al día, right? Three times a day, once a day, twice a day, four times a day. 
O podemos utilizar palabras de tiempo o periodo que es como daily, diariamente, weekly, semanalmente, monthly, mensualmente, and annually, anualmente. Remember, daily, weekly, monthly, annually. Daily, diariamente, weekly, semanalmente, monthly, mensualmente, and annually, anualmente. So, the right here we have, uh, once again, do not say one time. That's very informal. We're going to say once. Do not say two times. Say twice. Okay? So, here we have some examples. She visits the dentist twice a year. Ella visita al dentista dos veces al año. He goes to the gym three times a week. Tres veces a la semana. I call her daily to make sure she's fine. Le llamo diariamente aquí. Periodo, daily. I call her daily to make sure she's fine. Le llamo diariamente para asegurarme que ella está bien. There's a leap day every four years. Hay un como... Año bisiesto o un año más cada cuatro años. Right? So we pay our mortgage every month. Pagamos nuestros impuestos o nuestras deudas cada mes. So remember, guys, when someone asks you the question, how often, you know that automatically when you give an answer to that question, you will have to use an adverb of frequency. Okay, keep that in mind. So any questions so far, guys? Because this is pretty much it. If you do not have questions, we will have to go to the practice. So if you have any question, please let me know right now. This is the time for you to ask. En la segunda parte, every two days, eh, ahí no aplica lo del eh, twice. No, 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 no. Why? Eh, porque en este caso estamos siendo específicos y decimos cada dos días. Y two times significa dos veces. So that's okay. completely different. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. All right. So any other question, guys? Teacher, mm -hmm. cuando se usa how often, eh, se va a tener que usar una de estas palabras de, de tiempo y nunca se va a usar las adverbios de frecuencia. No, 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 no. Cuando alguien te haga una pregunta con how often or how often, often, sorry, siempre vas a utilizar un adverbio de frecuencia. Siempre. O, en su defecto, vas a utilizar una palabra o expresión de frecuencia. Pero generalmente lo que se utiliza es un adverbio de frecuencia. Cualquiera okay, de las dos puede ser aceptable, pero generalmente se utiliza más el adverbio que la expresión o palabra de frecuencia. Teacher, entonces sería, esto sería precisamente como para especificar. Exactly. Estos son eh, los adverbios o expresiones de frecuencia. Ambos son para dar algo específico, detallado. Porque si yo te pregunto, how often, es como qué tan a menudo tú haces algo. Aquí tenemos como un ejemplo, how often do you brush your teeth? ¿Qué tan a menudo te lavas o cepillas tus dientes? Entonces tú me puedes decir siempre, I always brush my teeth. O si quieres usar una expresión de frecuencia o una palabra de frecuencia, tú me dices, I brush my teeth once a day, una vez al día. So, pero lo importante es que recuerden dónde van a poner el adverbio y dónde van a poner las expresiones o palabras de frecuencia. Los adverbios van como después del subject. Después y del subject. Es, uh 
Ajá. Y esos prácticamente van al final de la oración. Exactly, at the end. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So, any other questions? All right, if there is no questions, here we have the time for us to practice. So this is the practice that we have for today. As you know, take a screenshot, take a photo or something that will, I, that will help you to remind. And let me know when you're done so I can move to the next one. Yeah, teacher. If we have. Done. Yeah, teacher. Okay, I just wanted to tell you that in these ones, then these plates are only three adverbs. There's no more than that. Que no se vayan a detener buscando y buscando otros because there's only three. Okay. So here we have. Done? Done? Yes. And this is the last part. Yeah, teacher. Okay, perfect. So now we are going to go to the breakout rooms. And we are going to try to work on this. So please go ahead and join your groups. Hello, Rosa, are you having problems trying to connect to your group? Sí, teacher, tuve un problema por uh, esperar el grupo, me salí y luego volví a entrar y ya no me pude eh, ingresar al grupo. All right, so let me try to add you to this group. Just a moment. No sé qué pasó, teacher. Oh my me regresó God. de me regresó de nuevo. Okay, let me see. Okay. Gracias. All right.
creo que sería she usually mm -hmm. sí she usually plays sí play her friends <coughs> plays Ajá, with her friends. With her friends. In the park. Mm Often. Sometimes. Sí, often. En el último para abajo. Ya voy. Si no se me va este. Ok. Ah, yeah. ah ya la vi, la última. Ya. Yeah. Often. Ahí está. Yes. Solo dijo que eran tres. Yes. Está bien. La, vamos a seleccionar la correcta. And Jim never is a work. Jim is never a Jim is la D. Jim. Tres. Ahí está la primera. Always. Always. Abajo de la K. Ahí. Permítame. Sometimes está también ahí. Sometimes en la segunda línea. Or, uh -huh. Always. Y always. Uh -huh. Sometimes Ajá, sí. faltaría una. Y faltaría. Sometimes sí. en la segunda línea. Uh -huh. Ya la vio. Permítame. Ok, always Y sometimes En la segunda línea Sometimes En la segunda línea Ah, sometimes Sometimes Falta uh -huh. una Sometimes. Uh -huh. Usually está uh, en la penúltima, usually, pero está de atrás para de la derecha ¿Qué? para allá. Ajá, es yeah. usually. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Ahí. Vaya, listo. Solo exageran, ¿verdad? Sí, Solo existe. Porque en algunos es, digamos, el his o el she's. 
Y después, bueno, y hay otras en donde solo, digamos, empieza el subject y después viene el adverb, digamos, Daniel always. Pero aquí she is, es ella, ¿qué? A veces llega tarde. Ajá. Sí, no, bueno, sería she, she, no, no, sí, verdad. Ah, ya me confundí. <risa> Ah. A ver. She is sometimes late. Que lleva Liz. Tiene que ir antes. Entonces en las primeras estábamos mal. Y... Aunque no, no vea, no estábamos bien. No lleva ninguna. Ni ajá, no lleva nada. como el, el, ajá, el verbo, digamos, se podría decir el ser o estar, ¿verdad? Mm, el tweet. Solamente esta la tiene, la Ajá. She is sometimes late. Entonces, en la otra es. My sister. My sister never gets up. My sister never. Ya me ayudó el my sister. Se referirá como a la. <laughs> Esto es, mm. esto es trampa. Ay, no. Y se ríe el teacher.
Well, all right, guys. How did you feel with the exercises? Were they difficult? Were they easy? Did you finish them all? Or did no. you didn't? No, which one did you left? The last one? Yes. All right. The last one, yes. So you completed, Eric, or you left the last one? La primera, segunda y tercera. All right, so we're going to, to leave the last one for tomorrow. But I will need your help. Let me see with the first, second, and the third one. So I will say some names. Let me share this screen right now. So let's see. All right. So I will need the help of Heidi Miranda with letter B, Lisette Castillo, letter C, Mr. Eric, letter D, and uh, Roxana, letter E. So go ahead. Okay. Mm -hmm. We sometimes have pizza for dinner. We sometimes have pizza for dinner. Correct. Very good. So, Lisette? I never talk to a stranger. Very good. I never talk to strangers. Mr. Eric? They always watch TV in English. They always watch TV in English. Very good. Thank you. The last one. She usually plays with her friends in the park. Very good. Thank you so much. So let's see. Which adverbs of frequency did you find in this word search? Let me see. Uh, what? Okay. Bye. Usually. Usually, sometimes. What else? Often. Often. Always. And always. I said three, but there were, I was, I was like trying to verify if some one of you found an extra one that it was right there. And I just saw that most of you just found always often and sometimes but there was only there was only one group that I, that I think it was Roxana's group that they found this one that it was it was backwards that it estaba para atrás that it was usually i think that they were the only ones that find that one very good Nosotros so, también. Oh, you did, Mario? Sí. All right. So, okay, Mario as well. So, now that you're saying that, Mario, can you help me with number one, please? Jim is never at work. Are you sure that that is the right answer? Yes. All right. Very good. Yes, that is the right answer. Jim is never at work. So, let me see another one another person angelica number two we usually have lunch at 12 o'clock we usually have lunch at 12 o'clock so that means that which letter letter b yes okay so let me see another one Catherine ramirez number three she always travels by train. So which letter is that? Oh, letter C, right? Yes, she always travels by train. And the last one, Hazel. They sometimes go out in the evening. So letter B. They yes, sometimes go be. out in the evening. Okay, very good. So the last one, guys, that is this one, it will be for tomorrow. So if you can work on that throughout the day 
or uh, we're going to have uh, or discuss this one tomorrow before starting the class. So um, I was going to say something and I forgot it. Oh my God, it's not possible. Oh, yes. So um, remember that I told you at the beginning of the class that our last class is going to be like a review or a reinforcement of any of the classes. So tomorrow before starting the class, I'm going to ask you which topic would you like me to reinforce? And the one that got the most points or the most votes, that will be the one that we will have for our last class because uh, our last class will be next Monday. That will be our last class. So think about that today and well, tomorrow, the morning. So I will ask you at night to verify which one is the topic that we are going to reinforce. And do not forget guys, that you only have four days to complete the platform. If you don't completely, uh, you don't complete it, I'm sorry, that means that you are not going to the next level. So you have to work on that to complete it before we finish the course. So, well, that's pretty much it for today, guys. It was a pleasure for me to see you today and see you tomorrow at the same time and by the same channel, okay? So have a good night. Good night. Good night. Bye-bye. Good night.